Hi guys. All right, we are going to look at section three today. This is your learning theories. Um, I do want to uh, give you a little um, precursor to this. Um, this slideshow is very bare. Um, so in the past, what I've done for this uh, unit is that I just started realizing that with some of the other um, note sections when I've done um, PowerPoints, when I just have stuff on the slides, people just write down exactly what's on the slide and don't write anything else down. Um, and so with this specific unit, what I have done is give you very bare um, PowerPoint and I just lecture and you guys just have to write down based off of the audio. So like me talking. Um, I think this will be super beneficial that I am doing this in a video because you'll be able to go back if you miss something. Um, but I think just listening to me talk and writing notes off of me listening um, is going to be helpful with this material because um, it's it's not hard, but it's a lot of examples, um, pretty in-depth examples. So um, I think it's just easier if I just tell them to you rather than you just trying to write it down. You guys a lot of times don't pay attention. You're just trying to get um, the slide written down on your notes. So I do need you to take notes, but just be aware that it's going to be me talking. Okay, so let's begin. All right, there's this quote here from Martin Luther King Jr. from 1963. Uh, it says, there is such a thing as the freedom of exhaustion. Some people are so worn down by the yoke of oppression that they give up. A few years ago in the slum areas of Atlanta, a Negro guitarist used to sing almost daily, been down so long that down doesn't bother me. Sorry, that down don't bother me. This is the type of negative freedom and resignation that often engulfs the life of the oppressed. But this is not the way out. To accept passively an unjust system is to cooperate with that system. Thereby, the oppressed become as evil as the oppressor. So, um, I think this is, speaks a lot to, you know, some of the things that we are experiencing right now in our country. Um, and you might have read some of this stuff on social media. I don't know what your guys' social media looks like, but mine right now is just so um, divided and uh, people just calling for justice and calling out the injustice. Um, and I think that this is very important that I just feel like, you know, in the excerpt that you're reading, um, he describes the behavior of some African Americans in the 1950s. And, you know, Dr. King was a leader um, in the struggle for civil rights. And he observed that this behavior of just, you know, I'm just so frustrated. I, I'm just, I'm beat down by the unjust system every single day. I don't know what else to do. Um, and this, this idea of not trying to fight back, um, and I don't mean fight necessarily in a negative way, but just give pushback. Um, King recognized that an oppressive system um, just maintains these behaviors. Uh, so like Dr. King, what we're going to look at is that behaviorists look to the environment um, to see what is reinforcing behavior. So what are the things that are going around that are allowing behavior to keep happening? Um, and so Dr. King felt like, you know, some of the negative things that are happening in these African-American communities um, are, are just being reinforced by the people that are treating them unfairly. Does that make sense? Um, in other words, you know, not being treated justly is going to cause this cycle of people, you know, lashing out at the police because police aren't treating them justly and then the police respond um, negatively and then you know you have protests which are you know violent in nature and then the police respond negatively and it just goes round and around and around and a behaviorist would say that the environment is reinforcing this negative behavior um, and so that's what we're going to look at today so um, a behaviorist believes that as individuals differ in their learning experiences um, they acquire different behaviors and then different be, um, personalities because of that. So, um, like I said, King behaviorists look to the environment to see what it's reinforcing. And we're gonna look at Skinner, okay? So Skinner was, you know, B.S. Yeah, Skinner was your guy that came up with this theory of behaviorism and he looks at what are the rewards and what are the punishments um, that cause a person to act 
a certain way um, and then their personality becomes a certain way. So um, the first thing that he is going to do is specify the behavior and then find out what causes it. So what causes a person to act in a specific way? Um, he believes that these are the um, that contingencies of reinforcement are the reason why someone acts a specific way. So contingency of, uh, contingencies of reinforcement, that is super important. That phrase, contingency of reinforcement, refers to rewards and punishments. So um, what is making a person act that way? Well, it's probably the things that are happening, both good and bad, that cause them to act that way. Okay, so specifying that behavior um, so somebody is, you know, having temper tantrums. Well, what is causing those temper tantrums? And that is um, the goal here. Let me see. Um, which I just talked about the rewards, the punishments, what reinforces the behavior, all of those things. Um, let's go back. Oops. So my example that I really want you to think about here is if you have a guy um, and he is super depressed, okay? So we're going to call him Reuben. Um, Reuben's depressed. Skinner would say he's not um, necessarily depressed. He would tr try and figure out why is he acting depressed? Why is he acting sad? Well, he never um, leaves his room and he cuts class. He doesn't smile. He doesn't talk to people. And Skinner is going to figure out, well, what is what is causing him to act like this? So what reward does Reuben receive for never leaving his room? So one hypothesis is that Reuben's girlfriend, we're going to call her Brandy, um, has unintentionally reinforced his behavior by spending a lot of time with him because she's trying to cheer him up. So he acts super sad. His girlfriend um, then is trying to cheer him up. Maybe before she didn't pay a lot of attention to Ruben, which is kind of what caused him to be a little depressed. But by her then spending time with him trying to, you know, cheer him up, he kind of unintentionally realizes, like it's in his unconscious almost, well, if I'm sad, she'll spend time with me. She pays attention to me. Does that make sense? So he's almost being rewarded for acting depressed. Um, note here that Skinner's approach immediately suggests a hypothesis that can be proved um, true or false, okay? So you can figure out right away if this is true or not. Um, if paying attention to Ruben encourages his depression, then ignoring him should decrease the likelihood of his behavior. So if she um, ignores him um, and doesn't hang out with him as much, does he start to change? Um, does his sadness start to go away? Um, Brandy, therefore, might try ignoring Ruben for a few days. If he starts to leave his room, which then she should reinforce that, you know, and as well, you know, she has discovered the contingencies of reinforcement that, like, foster his behavior, okay? So if he doesn't leave his room, she'll know that that's not it, you know? It's not necessarily her just spending time with him in his room. It's something else, so let's try something else. Um, maybe Ruben is glued to the television in his room all day and he has become a game show addict or he's become like addicted to um, video games. So what do you do? Well, you can take away the television and you'll find out if that is what is keeping him in this depressed state. Does that make sense? Um, so what are the things that are keeping people um, in their, in the state that they are in? Um, if a teacher, if you are turning stuff in late and you're just really unorganized and a teacher just allows it to happen um, and is letting you turn in your work late all of the time, well, that's just reinforcing that bad behavior because you know you can get away with it, right? Um, and so a teacher can say, well, I think they're just, you know, they're slacking because I'm letting them slack. Well, if I stop letting you turn in um, your work late and then that stops, then I'll know, is it me or are you just really just struggling to get your work in period, okay? So it's something that can be tested. The hypothesis can be figured out. Is it right or is it wrong? Pretty easily. So that is your um, behaviorism. So Skinner looks at the rewards and the punishments, the contingencies of reinforcement, our rewards and punishments, guys. Okay, that's super important. So specify the behavior, find out what causes that behavior, what is reinforcing that behavior, all right? Um, the next person we have is Albert Bandura. 
Um, so as I'm going along, if you need to stop to um, write down your notes, you're more than welcome to. If you need to go back, please do that as well. So, all right, Albert Bandura, he, is, he has this idea of social cognitive theory. Um, and the social cognitive theory looks at um, observational learning. So observational learning here is that p people direct their own behavior by their choice of model. So a person is going to acquire a new behavior by watching the actions of another person. Um, so in his view, people direct their behavior um, based on like looking at other people, all right? So there are a few different things that we're gonna talk about. Um, in terms of this, let's see here. The first one is this cognitive personal factor. So um, they create their, um, sorry, I just like got lost. They create their personality um, by looking at beliefs, expectations, values, intentions, social roles, as well as emotional makeup and biological and genetic influences. So um, you kind of start to admire the beliefs of others. You admire the expectations of others. Um, you, you, know, you admire the values that someone has or their intentions or maybe just their role in society as a whole. And you realize that's kind of what I wanna be like. And so you start to mimic them um, and you start to create your own um, personal, um, personality traits based off of theirs. Um, the other is behavior, so your personal actions. Um, you start to change your own actions, so it's not just your values and your beliefs and your intentions, but the, the things that you're actually doing um, in, in a public setting, in a social setting, start to change. So um, through the social and cognitive theory, a person is going to um, start to act differently, okay, because of what they're what they're seeing other people do. And then, lastly, um, things that play a role in this social cognitive theory is environmental factors. So, um, you'll look at the social, political, and cultural influences, and then just the experience that you have in life um, in general, and looking at other people's like what. What you can relate to is going to, you know, create your personality. But if somebody else has a similar um, backstory as you, you might, you know, look up to them because they've handled this so much better. And once again, you're going to watch the actions of another person, um, and you start to learn how to create your own personality through looking at them. So it's kind of like um, as a child, like little children are you know, watching their parents so closely. As adults, we can do this as well. As teenagers, we do this as well. This is something I think that you guys probably um, experience often. When you start hanging out with somebody, you pick up on like little nuances or little phrases that they say um, on their habits and stuff. Um, I find that even like as teachers, we pick up on like your guys' slang. Um, and that is like social cognitive theory in action. So I'm picking up on your guys' um, the words that you use or behaviorisms and so on and so forth. And sometimes I like catch myself at home saying things. I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I just said that. Like that sounded like so-and-so, things like that. Um, when you start dating someone new, this happens a lot because you are just around them so often. Um, you start uh, working at a new workplace and you get new friends through your workplace. You just pick up on, you know, things that they say, things that they do, their beliefs, and you, you almost morph it into who you are as a person. So um, that is social cognitive theory. So in learning theories, um, they focus on concrete actions that can be tested and measured. So these are things that it's not just a thought um, it's actual like words and actions and behaviors, things that I can see, um, that I can test. Um, and that is how um, it is run the, through all the learning theories. Everything is run through, you know, testing and measuring. And I'll be, like I said, with behaviorism, you'll be able to like give some rewards and give some punishments and take away um, the contingencies that you think it might be and figure out, well, is, is this what is keeping them in this state of mind or is it this? And you were able to test that with social cognitive theory. Um, you're able to just watch their actions and be like, mm, yeah, I'm just like observing this. Um, you know, at one point you started, you know, talking like this person or at one point you started making um, 
hand gestures or body language that was so similar of this person that you were around for five hours a day. Um, so yeah, learning theories of personality focus on concrete evidence is what we're going to call it, concrete actions that can be tested and measured. So um, that is all I have for you, um, specifically for um, section three. But um, normally what we do here is we act out these um, we act out these theories. If we have some time in class um, on other days, we will absolutely take some time to act them out because it's um, it's super fun. You guys always have a lot of fun with it. You guys just act really goofy and we kind of play charades and it's a good time. It put you in scenarios where you can use these um, experiences yourself. So um, that is all I have and I hope that um, you use this video and you go back and re-listen to things as you need to and yeah that's all I have all right